welcome to citizens forum we have a wonderful opportunity today my name is fred smart and i have a co-host host with me ken hibben to talk about some very interesting subjects on today's show and i'll give you just a very very quick background to what brought me here i was asked just in the last few days to take on this role and my co-host ken hibben has agreed to come on with me because we have a subject here actually a couple of subjects that interlock that have to do with the judicial system and the requirement that just an average rational logical citizen would expect as it relates to the need for transparency three individuals are here to my right beginning with attorney robert lock who was a former special assistant state's attorney and a former legal policy advisor to the illinois commerce commission who is now practicing uh... as a private attorney here in the city of chicago and has just recently filed a federal lawsuit against the city of chicago representing his client gene zorich this is a case that uh... just recently in the last year year and a half that i've come across just as an interested bystander that involves a set of issues that really get very close to the heart of all of us and in this case uh... hypothetically the claim here is that the city of chicago has redacted and changed an official legal federal transcript involving mister zorick's case which as the on only individual who has won a shackman decree case against the city of chicago on a pro se basis even with le with or without legal representation he's the only one who's defeated the city on the appeal at the appellate level the city according to mister lock and mister zorick they have redacted and changed the official transcripts which had a determination on him losing the claims for physical and emotional suffering and damages we're going to get into that this is the brief that was filed uh... july nineteenth two thousand five and it's quite a case but basically there are four words that kind of hit me between the eyes involving this and it's a question we should all ask because every judicial proceeding should have a transcript number one but back in the transcript there should be tapes number two to validate and cure the transcript in this case all of the tapes all of the audio tapes to my understanding are missing and mister zork has not been given access to the audio tapes so the question that I was presented by the producer of this show several months ago was very simple. Where are my tapes? And to this day, the city of Chicago and the judicial system in question here has refused to give up the tapes to validate Gene's claim. Sitting next to Gene is another individual who has flown all the way from Las Vegas to connect the dots here at a another level this involves the internal revenue service on claims that uh, he is representing around the country his name is attorney robert allen jones he is a former department of justice special prosecutor a former and current u.s marine officer who served in vietnam he's engaged in private practice currently to defend taxpayers against the irs all across the country it may seem a little bit complicated but the connection here too is the same issue evidence of redacting changing altering the official record in cases involving his clients and he will go into more details about that uh... my co-host ken hibben is from willowbrook i happen to reside in in evanston uh... we all have families and uh... in this country we have a right to ask questions uh... for better part of seventeen eighteen years i was in the financial services industry and when i realized who i was ultimately representing it was the end investor at the end of the pipeline who wanted to buy or sell and i took it upon myself to ask simple questions too like what happens to a trade when it hits the floors of the exchanges what is a bid what is an offer how do we establish a right just record as far as an audit trail when it comes to transacting and exchanging value between and among 
individuals that operate through exchanges uh, exchanging contracts. With that, Ken, do you have any comments just overall to provide an umbrella to this? Well, I'm just yeah, I'm just very excited in, uh, about the format that we have here and, and looking to hear uh, some of the answers of the questions we have to pose towards Gene and, and Robert and, of course, Bob to uh, bring some light into the subjects that we've got here today because they're very uh, enlightening and yet they're disturbing to a lot of people today and, and hopefully we can shed some light on some very, very important information that the public needs to know. So. Uh, just before we get into this, I'll give you a little snapshot. A couple weeks ago, I was up in Washington County, Wisconsin, helping a gentleman out, uh, filing some papers in the local circuit court, and he was endeavoring to try to get a transcript involving a proceeding that had taken place a couple weeks prior. Had a devil of a time getting this, and in front of several people st stacked standing behind waiting for similar uh, papers and filings, we got confirmation verbally from the assistant to the circuit court up there that they do not record any legal proceedings in the court, the circuit court of Washington County in, in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, the re one connection here a couple of few days ago, Fox 32 interviewed Mr. Zorick and his attorney, Bob Locke, on this subject because it did hit close to home given the Shackman decree issue, given the corruption and all the stories in the local uh, venue here in Chicago and so they interviewed and it did air last Thursday night on Fox 32 local Gene's case along with his attorney but uh, the story up there in Washington County Wisconsin is similar I said hey this is a local story nothing is recorded in this local circuit court as far as the audio tapes that's another thing we have tremendous technology in the world audio digital uh, the internet all kinds of ways small cameras small digital devices we should take it upon ourselves to record a, a and cure a proper judicial record at all levels and with that I'd like to turn it over to Bob I have read through this case it is a recent filing was made in response to the city's motion to dismiss just last what Wednesday Tuesday Thursday Thursday uh, Bob, could you amplify on this and just kind of give us a snapshot for our listeners? Sure, sure. I mean, the thumbnail version is this. This is a case that's been going on for a, a long time. Um, the original suit was filed by Mr. Zork back in the 80s, actually. And uh, it, it's really an incredible story when you look at what's transpired over the last couple of decades and, and how little resolution has been reached with respect to some tremendous damage that was done. Um, the, sh the short story is this. Mr. Zorick, uh, ultimately pro se, was, as you said before, the first person to defeat the city in a Shackman Decree ca case. Uh, his attorneys had basically abandoned him or he had fired them for what he felt was um, questionable conduct in, in, uh, uh, in violation of, of his rights and ultimately went on to try it by himself. The federal judge in that case, Judge, judge Brian Barnett Duff, found conclusively that the city had in fact fired him for political reasons. The city had alleged originally that Mr. Zorick had damaged a truck and that was the basis for his termination. Um, upon cross-examination of the city's experts and, and actually uh, upon uh, questioning by Judge Duff, the city ultimately admitted that, in fact, the day that Mr. Zork was supposed to have damaged this truck that led to his firing, he, in fact, was not even at work, and that they were uh, basically framing him for something that he had not done and using that as a pretext on which to terminate him. Mr. Zork won that case, won significant damages against the city, which at that time was a real cause celebrity because nobody had, had ever been successful in a Shackman case. Um, at that point, it becomes really interesting, and as we go back through the record in the ca this case, it really becomes troubling because it seems like every day that I get more documents in this case and I go back through it, I find more and more instances of questionable conduct on the part of what appears to be the city of Chicago, but uh, in fact may involve uh, different personnel within different levels of the federal judiciary. And, and what I mean by that is this. We have specific instances where transcripts in Mr. Zork's case 